Welcome to the 29th video in the Marine Invertebrate Biology series, continuing on with phylum Echinodermata. We're looking at sea cucumbers. And if this uh, slow moving lump of tube like flesh doesn't get you excited about, um, about inverts, nothing will. In the class, Holothoroidea. So they're very similar to the echinoids, like uh, urchins, and the mouth and or and anus are opposite sides of the body, uh, but the body is essentially elongated. If you took a starfish or and uh, stretched it out, so from top to bottom, so it was a long, long tube, like a cushion star, made it a long tube, really tall. That's a sea cucumber in a way. So um, since they flop over on their side like an elongated tube, they move in one direction with the head at one end and the tail at the other end. And that means that they, they're directionally moving and they will have a secondary bilateral symmetry. So they have a radial symmetry, but they have a secondary bilateral symmetry. Here's a pretty big sea cucumber, a lot bigger than the uh, ones that we have around here. Okay, so they do get quite big. All right, so they have ossicles, but as we mentioned in the first video, they're reduced to these microscopic sclerites. But instead of using the ossicles as defense, uh, they have a tough, leth leathery, and flexible covering, and that is often quite noxious tasting. Most predators don't really like uh, to try to eat sea cucumbers. The insides are more palatable, but not the tough outer area, uh, the, not the skin. So around the mouth, they've got these um, feeding uh, podia, modified two feet that are called tentacles or buccal podia. Remember the term buccal? Let me get my pointer up. Okay. Buccal means around the mouth. Okay. And uh, they can be completely retracted within the body wall. We'll see some examples of this as we go through. So here are the modified um, buccal podia, okay, modified feeding appendages. And they have this one little gonophore for broadcast spawning or sometimes brooding um, eggs on the body externally. Uh, but they have, uh, since they have the secondary bilateral symmetry, what they have is a dorsal surface, which is always remains on the top. This would be the, the plane of symmetry it's split down there and then uh, split down the middle on the bottom. They have uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, body sections, just like any rate like the radially symmetrical echinoderms but um three of those sections have two feet and then face down to the bottom the ventral side to the uh surface so they can crawl along with their two feet and then two of those sections have reduced or absent two feet that and that those face up you don't really need two feet up into the water column uh, so they, uh, you'll often find when you're, when you're diving, these piles of pellets and, uh, these things are very common, but they turn over massive amounts of sediment, of soft sediment. Some of them, they're, they're non-selective deposit feeders. They just eat any old dirt and digest the slime off of the outside of the particles. And that means that they're going to have a lot of material going through their gut and lots of poo. But you'll often find these piles of sand, which are sea cucumber poo, poo piles when you're diving. Uh, here are the uh, little some of examples of what the, the little ossicles look like, or these sclerites, and you can use those to diagnose what species of sea cucumber you are dealing with. So uh, they usually either deposit. Um, eat like the dirt on the sand in the uh, on the surface or they can be suspension feeders um, uh, people are trying 
uh, they're doing studies and trying out these trials of uh, putting uh, extra sea cucumbers below mussel farms to try to eat up all of the mussel poo that falls to the bottom of the of the um, uh, underneath the, the mussel farms. And the reason is because these sea cucumbers, uh, sea cucumbers have sold for as much as $30,000 a kilo. Uh, uh, the local ones here, uh, we haven't really developed much of a fishery for them because, um, well, it just hasn't been developed, but uh, uh, for a few reasons, but they can sell for six or $700 a, uh, a kilo. And so if you could have a, uh, like a second income stream by raising sea cucumbers on the mussel farms, that could be a, a potential, potentially good moneymaker. So what they do is they um, have their, the sticky dendritic um, uh, podia or tentacles, and they trap the particulate matter, like little organic stuff on the on that adhesive sticky thing then stuck the tentacle into the into the mouth and wipe off the food so uh and they go round and round and round one tentacle after the other and there's a video of that that you should go and check out which is linked on moodle and on the lesson plan and if we look at how they may feed there are lots and lots of ways okay so here's a surface deposit feeder walking along the bot, just eating the organic material off the bot, off the, uh, the surface. Some of them dig through the sediment and maintain that connection to the top where they poo out things that they eat sediment underwater or underground. Some of them just dig through the, the um, substrate, never really reaching the top. Some of them filter feed by either standing up or burying themselves um, in the sediment and uh, filter feed or yeah, filter feeding, suspension feeding. Uh, other ones crawl around on reefs, and um, so they're in lots and lots of different environments, even down to uh, the deepest of, of the uh, ocean trenches. Speaking of deep ocean trenches, if you want to see a very interesting uh, holothuroidian uh, sea cucumber, look up a sea pig on YouTube. All right, so gas exchange. They have uh, these things called respiratory trees. Okay, they don't have much, um, uh, they don't have gills. They have these things called respiratory trees and they are inside the body and open to what's called the cloaca, which you might remember the term from vertebrates with uh, sharks, but the cloaca is the opening um, to at the butt end of the sea cucumber. Here is what it is. It's like a muscular bulb uh, right behind the anus. And so what that does is it pumps water into the respiratory trees. And you can see these areas with lots and lots of surface area. There are five of them, one for each uh, area of the body. So it pumps that into uh, the uh, body and then a gas exchange can uh, happen and then as the water is um, deoxygenated and uh, carbon dioxide diffuses in then the cloaca can pump out it can squeeze and pump water out of the, the respiratory trees so it slowly fills them and uh, and then expels the water within just no different than our lungs when we breathe in uh, we're breathing in air to the alveoli, these things go to into the respiratory trees, pumping the water in. Long antenna, or sorry, long intestine, as you can see, but you don't have to uh, learn any of the other uh, terminology in here. So as we said, the cloaca uses a pumping action and uh, dilates and contracts, and then um, it's got the madrepora inside. So anyway, if you go and watch a, a sea cucumber and you just sit there and watch its butt, you'll see it slowly pulsating. So here we can rise to the, to the commonly used phrase, the slowly pulsating anus of Australis decapus mollus. <laughs> okay, the blood vascular system. So they have a blood vascular system um, in order to pump uh, um, some of that uh, oxygenated 
water that are sorry oxygenated blood around that um, is exchanged with the water basket let's say uh, defense so they have these things called cuvarian tubules there um, you may have seen a uh, episode of jackass in which they get these uh, these sea cucumbers to expel their cuvarian tubules but what happens is when they get threatened they just have these uh, sticky uh, spaghetti-like tubes that they blow out their butt and they um, expand and become sticky and noc noxious and uh, they have a, sort of a noxious chemical on them that uh, if they like say a fish or something gets this tubule stuck to it then it um, is irritating and may even uh, bind the fish up and so much that it can kill it and there's a video link to that on um, on the Moodle page as well uh, here's a picture of what the cuvarian tubules look like when they've been expanded out and they just the water just washes them back and forth around the the sea cucumber um, trying to be a, a deterrent for anything that would like to eat it.